Good afternoon and welcome to the team auditorium here at the UC Health Training Center. I'm Dave Logan, voice of the Broncos, and uh, we would like to welcome everybody here today on what most certainly will be an historic day for the Denver Broncos franchise. Uh, on behalf of the entire organization of the Broncos, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce and welcome the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group. We welcome you collectively and individually to everybody here in attendance and to, to all of Broncos country as well. Uh, I'd like to welcome members of the media, many colleagues that I see and friends that are here in attendance today, Broncos staff members that are able to, uh, to pull away and come down here and, and join a special guest here as well uh, in the team auditorium. And also, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Broncos country, many fans here that are able to uh, listen and or watch today's event uh, on the Broncos digital platform on Nine News and also on KOA radio. Um, to my right, I am pleased to be joined by members of the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce first Rob Walton, to his right, Carrie Walton Penner. To Carrie's right, Melody Hobson. To Melody's right, Dr. Condoleezza Rice. And on the uh, end is Greg Penner. I also want to recognize Sir Lewis Hamilton, who is unable to attend today. Uh, he also a member of the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group. So welcome to uh, each of you today. Um, today begins really an exciting chapter, I think, for the Denver Broncos franchise. Uh, one of the winningest franchises, not only in the National Football League, but in all of professional sports. Many of you uh, are eminently aware of that. Eight Super Bowl appearances, three World Championships, um, and just a tradition of community service and community outreach that is unparalleled. This organization has done a tremendous job of trying to make our community better, and they've done that on an extended basis. Last but not least, I want to uh, shout out again to Broncos Country, a dedicated, loyal, passionate, driven fan base that lives and dies with the success of this team. No question about that. They, they have died a little bit lately, but uh, there are good things ahead, I would think, and there is plenty of optimism for uh, what is ahead. Before we um, have each individual at the dais come up and share a few remarks, um, and, and each will come up and talk, and then Greg Pinner will field questions from the media, uh, as he represents the Broncos ownership group. But before we do that, I would like to uh, invite Joe Ellis up to share a few words. Thank you, Dave. I was uh, honored to be asked to say a few words as part of this historic moment and celebration for the Denver Broncos. Congratulations, Rob. Carrie, Melody, Dr. Rice, and Greg. You're going to hear this a lot. Welcome to Broncos country. I've uh, gotten to know the group over the past few months, and I will tell everybody here the Broncos could not be in better hands. From the start of the process back in February, their engagement, their enthusiasm and excitement for the Broncos and our community were evident. They care about winning and they care about winning the right way. As I said in a statement yesterday, it's been an honor and a privilege to be part of this organization for 27 years. Most of those were spent working for Hall of Fame owner Pat Bolin alongside a lot of truly great people. And quickly, I just want to give everybody in front of me here a quick shout out and thank you all in the media for your patience and tolerance over the years. I've enjoyed getting to know many of you. Looking ahead, I'm convinced that the Walton Penner Group will be caring stewards of the Broncos, honoring the championship tradition and everything that's been done in the past. But more importantly, 
I believe this group will put its own stamp on the Broncos, helping this organization achieve incredible things as we move forward. And with that, it's my honor to introduce the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group, Mr. Rob Walton. Thank you, Joe Ellis, and thank you all for being here uh, today. This is an exciting day, uh, milestone day in all of our lives. Uh, before we go any further, though, on behalf of our whole group, Carrie, Greg, Melody, Condi, and Lewis, uh, thank you, Joe Ellis. Uh, thank you for your leadership, your friendship, and for your willingness to guide the Broncos' transition to the next era. We respect you. Joe, we appreciate you, and we're grateful you've agreed to serve as an advisor in this transition. It means a lot to us. We know what you meant to Pat to the Broncos and what you meant to Pat Bolin. We know what you mean to the pet players, the coaches, and the staff. We know what you've done for the Broncos in these 27 years of service. There are not enough hours in the day to celebrate all your accomplishments on behalf of this team and the community. Pat Bolin built a great legacy and a record of winning and championships. We plan to do everything we can to build on the championship tradition of this great organization. We're thrilled, thrilled to be a part of the Broncos. Simply put, it's an honor to steward this historic franchise. Our number one priority is putting a winning team on the field to win Super Bowls for Broncos country. It's terrific to be here with my family and our good friends and partners. We're sorry Lewis couldn't be here, but of course you understand that he's in the middle of a season. We're excited to do this with our family and our accomplished partners, and we look forward to joining all the Broncos fans in celebrating a winning season. Please meet my daughter, Carrie Walton Penner. Good afternoon. It is great to be here finally. It's been a little bit of a process, but um, it's great to be here. Every time we, uh, at each step of the process, as we continue to have conversations and really got to know the organization better, got more familiar with the NFL and their process, we realized what an incredible opportunity this would be we got more and more excited about it and just more and more enthusiastic about being here. Um, the organization, the Denver Broncos, has an incredible history, a uh, great legacy that was started by Mr. Bo well, continued by and really built by Mr. Bolin, and we look forward to the future ahead of all of us. Across our ownership group, we support the shared vision, strategy, and needs of the organization. We'll draw on the extraordinary depth of our partners to help the Broncos succeed on the field, in the NFL, and across our community. We're new to the sports business, um, so this will be a, a, a great family endeavor for us, but also a significant learning opportunity. And we take that on um, fully and are really excited about um, the opportunity to learn and the challenges uh, in, in terms of really getting up to speed quickly. Um, we're committed fully to making sure that the Denver Broncos is the best team to play for, to work for, and to cheer for. I am now honored to welcome a great leader and businesswoman, Melody Hobson. Thank you very much, Carrie. I have to start off by saying it is such an honor and a privilege to be an owner of this remarkable organization. It really, it is overwhelming to even think about. The moment is humbling and it's historical, and yet I feel at home. I'm very excited to be here. As someone once wrote, if you are going to exceed your wildest expectations, your wildest dreams, you have to start with some pretty wild dreams, and this is certainly in that category. It is a joy to partner with other members of this ownership group, group, people that I've admired for a very long time. I also want to acknowledge the bond that I feel with the players who, like me, have had to overcome a lot in their lives. And I know the amount of focus and discipline that it has taken for them to get here. 
I also know all of the people, the family at home, the community, that they are responsible for and that they really understand how much that community wants to see them win and how much they want to win for that community. I feel a bond with them and I'm really, really happy to be a part of the organization to be and to stand with them. I also want to mention Lewis Hamilton. Lewis is my chosen little brother. I, as soon as this opportunity came up, I started off by saying, you have to have Lewis. I've met Lewis in his uh, rookie season as an F1 uh, driver, and we bonded over time. Uh, he, as you many know, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth, and I call him Sir Little Brother as a result of that. He is the goat in his field, the greatest of all time, and he has this winning mentality, not just on the track, but in everything that he does. He cares deeply about people, about our planet, and as the first and only in his sport, about diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. So I know you're going to, when you get the opportunity to meet him, love him as much as I do. Beyond that, I just wanna again thank you for the opportunity you're giving me to be a part of this team. And I now have the pleasure of welcoming up another epic overachiever, Condoleezza Rice, and uh, someone who I have admired and so many other people admire as well. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Melody. And um, like all of us, I'm so excited to be here today. I want to thank the Walton Penner Group for this amazing opportunity. Um, I'm just thrilled to be a part of this great Denver Broncos organization for a couple of reasons. One is that you have to understand how much I love football. My dad was a football coach when I was born. I was supposed to be his all-American linebacker. Uh, when he got a girl, he decided to teach her about the sport instead. And even though my father has gone to the Lord, I have to think that today he's thinking, she finally got a really important job. <laughs> I want to say, too, that it's great to be back in Denver. I came to Denver for the first time as a six-year-old. When my family came to, for my parents to go to graduate school, we returned to live here when I was 12 years old. I was taught by the Sisters of Loretta at St. Mary's Academy, on to the University of Denver twice for my undergraduate degree and my PhD. And during that period of time, everybody who lived here had to know what the Broncos mean to this community. I'm a part of the Orange Course generation, where you'd go into any grocery store or any restaurant, and there were all of those Orange Crush cans piled up with Reuben Carter or Louis Wright peering over them. And of course, the tradition would continue with the great Stanford man, John Elway, and Peyton Manning and others. This is a great tradition, a great heritage of winning. But the goal now is to build on that heritage and that tradition to continue it in a way that makes for a bright future. And I just know that the Walton Pinner Group is dedicated to that exactly. And as Melody said, we're also dedicated to this community, to this wonderful place called Denver, Colorado. And I have to say, a lot of places around Denver that love the Broncos. Because you know, in days when communities are ripped apart by so much, the football team, like the Broncos, can be a source of unity, a source of common purpose, a source of common pride. And I very much look forward to being a part again of this great Denver community and all that the Broncos mean to it. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to introduce Rob again. Rob, would you join me? <laughs> I'm back again. Um, I am pleased to come back to the stage here and share a little bit more information with you. Greg Pinner will be the new CEO of the Broncos. He's going to get to work immediately and bring the skills, talent, and record of success with him. We all appreciate his willingness to serve in this role. So come on up here, Greg, and tell us. Thank you, Rob, and uh, thank you to all of, all of you for those great comments. That was, that was just inspiring. 
Uh, it's great to be here with all of you today. Uh, we could not be more excited to uh, officially take ownership of the Broncos. And we also feel a deep sense of responsibility uh, and privilege to be in this position. The Broncos are an iconic franchise that means so much to Denver, Colorado, and, and the whole region. Following in the footsteps of Pat Bolin and Joe Ellis is no small feat. Uh, they've meant, uh, their leadership has meant success on the field, impact in the community, and of course, Super Bowl championships. Joe, I'm really glad that you're going to be available to us as an advisor. Uh, we're going to rely on you and, and call on you, and it's going to be uh, very helpful to us. Uh, I'm also looking forward to working with George Payton, one of the sharpest GMs in the business, and uh, he's got a terrific vision for the franchise here. And of course, uh, Nathaniel, ha Nathaniel Hackett, Coach Hackett is here as well, a dynamic up-and-coming head coach. Uh, these pieces that we've got in place are, have just brought an incredible energy to the building and uh, we can't wait to get started. Our Broncos fans have high expectations. Uh, we know that and we embrace it. We believe that a winning team and organization require the right people, high expectations, the necessary resources, and then accountability. We're committed to that and we're going to draw on this diverse ownership group to succeed. As Kerry said, we're new to the sports business and we know we have a lot to learn. We're going to be looking forward in the coming months to working with the staff, uh, our players, the community, leadership across the NFL to get to know as much as we can about this uh, fantastic organization and then move forward from there. This has been a really exciting few months for us, but not nearly as exciting as getting back to Denver last night, spending the time with our players and staff this morning. We had, had everybody together in the field house, and uh, we just can't, can't wait to get going and kick off a winning season. So with that, I want to thank you all, and what we're going to do now, as Patrick mentioned, is, is uh, break for a couple minutes and take a few photos, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Hey, Ryan O'Halloran from the Denver Post. Two-part question. Uh, do you plan on hiring a president to help you with the day-to-day -day and I'll have a follow-up? Uh, yes, I do plan to hire a president, and uh, when we're ready to announce that, we will, we will do that. And secondly, uh, Peyton Manning and John Elway, have you any discussions with them about joining your group or just working for the franchise? You know, we're, we're in a terrific position of having two great Broncos that uh, they were both out here today and, and uh, it's been fantastic to spend some time with them. Uh, you know, John Elway is the ultimate Bronco. He won championships as, a, as both a player and, and an executive. Uh, have had a chance to visit with him and look forward to learning as much from him as possible. And, and um, 
Peyton is one of the greatest NFL players of all time, uh, and obviously won a championship here. We've had a chance to get to know him through the process as well, um, and so that's that's you know we're just going to learn from both of them. It's going to be I think a really good relationship. Yes, uh, Mike. Mike Kliss with uh, Nine News. Uh, Greg, I was wondering if you could just give us some detail on how the chain of command is going to, obviously you're the CEO, but uh, well, what's Rob's role? What is Condoleezza Melody's role? And you know, what kind of input are they going to have? Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, everybody's gonna be involved. Uh, obviously with uh, six of us, somebody has to be on point, so I'll, I'll take that role. Uh, so you'll be seeing probably most from me here, but um, as you heard from, this is a, I mean, it's just an incredible group, and we're gonna, we're gonna draw on, on all of them uh, as we go through this. Um, Rob and Carrie will probably, um, uh, they'll be here obviously a lot with me as well on, on you know, dealing with any big issues or questions or strategic decisions that we're making, and, um, and then most of all, we're just really looking forward to all having fun together with this. Uh, you know, obviously this is a this is a business, but this is a sports you know franchise, and we want to win, and that's our goal. And part of that is is having a lot, a lot of fun as a family and with this group uh, while we do that. Hey, Greg Arnie Stapleton from Associated Press. I think fans are probably most concerned with um, Russ Wilson's future, and I was wondering. You know, is that a top of your to-do list, getting a long-term contract done with him? When, when would that commence? Well, first of all, we, we couldn't have been more excited as we were going through the process to see that the organization had, had made the trade for Russell. Uh, you know, it's critical to have a great quarterback in, in this league. And so to come in with Russell Wilson in place is a, is a tremendous benefit for us. Uh, on our first diligence trip in, in May here, one of the first people we ran into in the hallway uh, when Rob and Carrie and I were here was Russell. And right away you got a sense for how positive he is as a, as a leader. He's uh, just such a dynamic individual. And um, so we're, I can't wait to see him on the field. Uh, you know, I don't know how much we'll see of him on the field on Saturday, but, um, uh, but we're looking forward to it. And uh, at this point, nothing to say about his contract. Hey, Greg, uh, Eric Delahalla, DenverBroncos.com. In uh, particular, what stood out about Melody, Dr. Rice, and Lewis that appealed to you to add them to the ownership group? Uh, a few things. Uh, I mean, one, we wanted to add people that brought different perspectives and experiences, and certainly we have that here. Uh, Lewis being, a, a, you know, a, the winningest, the GOAT of race car Formula One driving, uh, Dr. Rice, with all of her experience in politics and academics and world affairs, Melody as a you know incredible businesswoman and her track record there, and we're big believers in bringing together different perspectives and experiences and backgrounds, and and that we think will make us more successful. George Stoya with the Denver Gazette. Uh, yesterday, Greg, you, you said ten years ago that this was an idea that maybe popped into your head. Can you take us back to that moment and why did it become this was the right time and right team for you to go in on? Because there's, there's been teams in the past, you know, come up for sale. Why this, this time? Yeah, there have, have been teams and, and we did first uh, start thinking about this about 10 years ago and, you know, informally expressed that interest to um, the league and others and, and at the time there was obviously nothing to do. Uh, we've, you know, contemplated the idea of other sports franchises, but if we were gonna do something, this, this was gonna be it. I mean, we, we live and work in Colorado. Uh, the NFL is just an you know, incredible platform, and the Broncos, with what they mean to this, this region and the success that they've had, if we were gonna buy any team, this was, this was the team. Mr. Penner, the players said that you spoke to them today in the meeting and articulated a vision. Can you share with us a little bit of what that was expressed to the players as you move forward with that vision? Uh, I mean, the vision, the, the big vision is we want to we, we want to win football championships. Uh, we want to do it in the right way, and so that's the you know the first place that you got to start is with the people. And again, on the football side, we couldn't be more excited about what we have with uh, George, Nathaniel, Russell in place. Those are the, those are the first pieces. But then, it, then it's a process that I mentioned, which is now you have the people, now you've gotta have really high expectations of, um, of ourselves 
uh, we got to make sure we have the resources, uh, and that comes in a number of different ways to support them. And then we have to hold ourselves accountable. And um, you know, that's that's where it gets a sometimes that gets a little tricky because you know you lose one game. That doesn't mean you're going to all of a sudden make a bunch of uh, short-term rash decisions. So there's an appropriate amount of patience, uh, but we do we will hold ourselves accountable. Great, Jeff Blakewell from ESPN. Uh, you. you each of you have said in some way that you're new to the sports business. How do you sort of educate yourself in the months ahead? And then how do you sort of remind yourself that football is the priority in this type of endeavor? Yeah, I don't think we'll ever lose sight of that football is the number one priority, that this, this is all here to uh, you know, compete and, and win. Um, but in terms of the priorities, you, I mean, you said it. Our the way you learn is by talking to talking to as many people as we can, and that's both internal, and the community, and across the league. So, you know, the good thing is the the other owners have uh, welcomed us with open arms. We know some of them. Uh, we have prior relationships with a number of them, and um, they've been very open with us in terms of sharing advice and counsel and all that. Uh, I mentioned we've have former players uh, who are involved and are, are, you know, will share their guidance with us as well. But, you know, we have business experience and we'll, we'll obviously draw on that, but this is new and, and so for us it's a process of, of listening and, and learning. Greg, uh, Darren McKee, 104.3 The Fan. Philosophically, I know you taught, were asked about the stadium yesterday and you said, oh, that's down the road, but philosophically there's different ways to do it. The Rams had private funding. The bills are taking public funding. I'm curious philosophically, what do you think the responsibility is for ownership in terms of new developments, stadiums, facilities, that type of thing? Yeah, we really don't have a view on that yet. It, um, it is early, we just closed today, so part of your question was assuming we were even gonna build a new stadium, and, and at this point, you know, Empower Field at Mile High is a terrific facility. It's hosted world-class sporting and entertainment events. Uh, we've got a partnership with the, uh, with the stadium district, and you know, with 10 years left on our lease, we've got some time to act, you know, go out and see what the different options are, uh, consider everything, and then, and then make a decision. Hey, Greg, Michael Spencer from CBS Colorado. Do you anticipate adding any more partners to the ownership group, and then I have a follow-up on that? Uh, at this point, we don't have anything to add or share on that, uh, no, no, no immediate plans. For you personally, what does it mean to be a part of the historic nature, adding Dr. Rice and Melody as the first black female owners in the NFL? Uh, to me, actually, it's a, it's a blessing to have uh, partners like this, their willingness to join us uh, in this endeavor uh, is a huge blessing, and, and I couldn't be more thankful. Mr. Punter, Zach Stevens with DNVR. Uh, congratulations, first off. And how involved will you and the ownership group be in the football decisions that happen, whether that's a day-to-day -day basis or a month-to-month -month basis? Yeah, we're, we're big believers. Every owner, I think, has to you know, stake out their own territory here. We're, we're big believers in empowering people. Uh, we love football. Um, you know, as, as Condi said, uh, her dad was a coach. She knows football, but we're not going to be calling plays. We're not going to be drafting players. Uh, we're going to empower this team, uh, you know, led by George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett to make those key decisions. Um, obviously, part of the fun is learning and understanding and all that, but, um, but we're not going to be, um, they're going to make the football decisions. Greg, Woody Page from the Dover Gazette and ESPN. I've watched a lot of your talks to colleges. You've talked about the commitment you make to the businesses you're involved with. You're the chairman of the board of Walmart. You are a co-founder and a co-general partner of an investment firm in California. Your predecessor in Pat Bolin also had a number of different jobs. He quit them all and became a full-time football man. Do you intend to do that? Do you intend to spread yourself around? In one of your speeches, you talk about going to Arkansas once a week, I think, to meet with people from Walmart. Are you going to be as fully involved as Pat Bolin was and are you planning to have a board of directors like you do with Walmart with the other ownership group members? 
Uh, we're not planning to have a, a board of directors. Uh, I probably consider this to be our, our informal board, but there's, it's not a formal group. Um, uh, I can't talk, speak to how uh, involved uh, Mr. Boland was or not. Um, I can tell you that for me as uh, chairman of Walmart, we've got a, uh, it's not a full-time job. It is a, uh, I think an important job and, and one that takes a lot of thought and energy, but, um, but Doug McMillan, our CEO, is just fantastic and he and his team run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so I, I do have the necessary time to spend here. Uh, and this is a, you know, this is this is a very high priority for us, and I'll I'll give it the energy and the time that it needs. Um, again, we're all about empowering people, and having the right people in place uh, for us here will be will be an important part of the equation. Andrew Mason, DenverFan.com, and 104.3 The Fan. A couple of questions. First of all, what are the characteristics that you seek? in a team president, and does sports experience matter in that? Uh, I think sports experience is, uh, is really important. Uh, is it absolutely essential? I'd say probably no, but it would make the bar higher to find the right person. Um, you know, we start with general characteristics of we want somebody that really high integrity, great values, great leadership, uh, diverse set of experiences, um, someone that aligns with our values as, as uh, partners here, and um, uh, we think we can find somebody great. You guys have talked about winning the right way. For you, what does that entail exactly? I think we have to start with uh, winning the right way starts with values, and so, you know, it goes from everything from, you know, how the how our culture is we want this as Kerry said we want this to be a great place to work we want our players to come here and feel like this they're supported this is a great place to play grow as individuals um, you know those types of characteristics are really important to us uh, and so you know that's that's what that's where we start from Rod Mackey, Nine News. Mr. Penner, um, we've used Strom a lot of times when rookies get introduced, coaches get introduced, and they talk about, you know, this is something they've worked for, they've dreamed for, but there's that reality moment when perhaps yesterday with the unanimous vote, perhaps when you touched down to Denver, perhaps walking out and seeing the team practice today. Was there that emotional moment with you ever saying, this is, this is ours now, I, I, this, the Denver Broncos are ours? Probably sitting here uh, on the stage and listening to uh, Rob, Kerry, Melody, and and uh, Condi is when it really sunk in. Uh, but yesterday was pretty impactful as well. Walking into um, the NFL owners meeting, uh, there's a fair number of people in that room, and and having their uh, warm response to us was uh, was certainly impactful as well. 